welcome everyone to this Lunchtime's HVG event. Um, I'm delighted to be joined by Laura Lowther from NCVO and we're going to be looking all um, at the vision for volunteering today and sort of where it's been, where it's at now and where it will go into the future. So um, pleased that you can join us and a huge thank you to Laura uh, for joining us as well. So handing over to Laura, I'm going to share my screen and we will kick off. Thanks, Rhiannon. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks so much to Rhiannon for the lovely invite and to you all for joining me today to chat about Vision for Volunteering. My name is Laura Lowther, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm Vision for Volunteering lead. I wanted to start by saying on a personal level, um, I spend a lot of time in heritage and cultural spaces um, in the Northeast, as you might be able to tell, uh, really envious of those working and volunteering in such magnificent places and spaces. There are some of you on the call who I've had the pleasure of meeting or connecting with before, and I'm sure more people who have a good awareness of vision for volunteering already, um, but perhaps a few others who are being introduced to it for the first time. So to balance that, I'm going to do a brief overview of the vision and what it's about, um, but keep that bit relatively brief and get into more reflective things together as a group uh, this afternoon. So um, if we can move on to the next slide, Rhiannon. So just an overview of what the vision is. So for anyone brand new to Vision for Volunteering, I can tell you that it's a 10 year project uh, designed to create a better future for volunteer volunteering. Technically we're a few years in now, but it's about looking towards 2032 and reimagining that future. You can see from the list there that it's very much a collaboration, a collective of national infrastructure organizations and leaders from across the sector we have AVM, DCMS, Muslim Charities Forum, NAVCA, NCVO, who host the project, Sport England and Volunteering Matters. We know, as lots of you on the call will too, that partnership working is never the easiest approach, um, but it's most certainly the right one. We're looking to influence big scale, meaningful change, and one organisation can't do that alone. So on the next slide, we're going to have a look at why we might need the vision and how that came about. Um, so at the time of the vision's inception, we were just emerging slowly from the pandemic. Many of you might have been involved in the consultation process too. We realised then and still know now that volunteering currently isn't accessible or equally enjoyable for everyone. We continue to see changing patterns in terms of who volunteers, how they volunteer, and in what types of activities and roles. Really tough challenges faced by society, such as the pandemic, um, that little thing, um, and more recent and ongoing cost of living crises mean that we have no choice but to adapt and to work together to create positive change. We know that challenges are gonna continue to pop up, so to remain open and agile to shaping and reshaping again, the volunteering landscape is vital. On the next slide, we're going to have a little look at the vision for volunteering themes and some lovely little logos and symbols to go with them. Um, so the vision itself centers around five key themes. I often consider them five key values. By keeping these themes in mind in every aspect of volunteering and involving volunteers, we can all move forward together and push for a better and brighter landscape. They will mean different things to different people and places and that's okay. It's also worth noting that when we talk about volunteering in the context of the vision, it's with every variety in mind. So regular structured volunteering, social action, micro volunteering, community involvement, being a good neighbor, employer sponsored volunteering, trusteeship and everything in between. So that inclusive and expansive approach feels really important here. We'll go into them a little bit more shortly, but for now, the themes are awareness and appreciation, power, equity and inclusion, collaboration and experimentation. What we know so far is that the themes have been received well as a set. They've landed with people and they resonate, which is great. 
Having said that, we're also keen not to hold on to things too tightly as a partnership. The themes are to be interpreted and used in a way that feels meaningful to you. So on the next slide, just a bit of information around activity and things that are happening as we speak, kind of um, up and down the country. So not specifically by the partnership, but kind of the influence of the vision so far. So in recent months, we've seen a handful of local visions in development. Places like Birmingham, Oxfordshire, Norfolk and more are working across their town, city, county to adapt these themes and shape their own narrative and vision around them. We know how important place-based approaches are, so this is brilliant to see. They are large scale, but with a local uh, focus, which is a really great combination. We also embrace and love to see the small micro changes too. So tweaking application forms or processes for volunteers to remove barriers and make them more inclusive and welcoming spaces is a powerful shift for good. We know that people are setting up volunteer spaces, forums and lines of communication where they perhaps weren't on before in their organisations to shift power a little bit, harnessing volunteer voice. Again, really small um, but meaningful changes. We're keen to see everything in between happen too. Vision workshops being held up and down the country, more conversation happening and more organisations using the vision concept and themes as a framework for strategy. It's all brilliant and it's all building momentum. It's all about what is meaningful to you where you are. And on the next slide, I'm going to take a little sip of tea first. So the next slide is all around learning as we go. So a quick bit of reflection on the opportunities and the challenges we've experienced so far. They are essentially uh, one and the same as opportunities and challenges tend to be. Um, the most exciting thing about the vision is the scale of involvement, the activity and the change that we want to see. The most challenging and nerve wracking thing about the vision is just the same. It's the scale of involvement, the activity and the change we want to see. It's a marathon and not a sprint, and it will continue to move and adapt and refresh itself. One of the key bits of learning we've had in recent months is the need to move from values-based concepts, which can be quite abstract, um, into tangible and clear approaches and actions. So we're working that into our plans at the moment, and it's absolutely the case that that's what's needed next. Um, on the subject, my colleague Sarah, um, who is delivering a series of insights and inspiration webinars, they did the first last week and we'll be repeating it again twice more due to demand. Um, I think they're sold out, but we're going to be making recordings really widely available too. Um, so Rhiannon, if you could share that link in the chat, please, that would be great. And then the next slide is a little bit about what's next for Vision for Volunteering before we go into the themes a little bit more. just on the next slide, thank you. Um, we're just about wrapping up a period of strategic and operational reset. So there's lots to come in the weeks and months ahead. A key aspect of this is welcoming our new co-chairs to the partnership board. We have Amanda Naylor, who is CEO of Volunteering Matters and Ruth Leonard, who is chair of Association of Volunteer Managers. This has been a hugely positive step and will really propel the vision forward. We know people want to connect more about the vision, um, about the vision and around the vision, explore it and be ex inspired by real life examples and to have access to tangible guidance and resources, all of which we are putting into action in our new plans. As I've mentioned, our emphasis will be on transferring knowledge and learning into taking action together. We'll also specifically be looking to activate networks like this one to take action and adopt and adapt the vision too. So watch this space. So if we pop on to the next slide, we're gonna go into the themes a little bit more. Um, so let's consider them a little bit more and set out what we think the themes will look and feel like for volunteers. So if each theme is embedded, evolving and established well, what will that look and feel like? So the first one is awareness and appreciation, a future where a culture of volunteering is part of everyone's life and volunteer roles are given the recognition they deserve. I also often think that this strongly relates to a focus on volunteering, sorry, a focus on volunteer motivations and preferences and really being driven by those things and having a really good understanding. 
So on the next slide, we have um, awareness and appreciation quotes. So some of the things you might hear a volunteer say and reflect on if this theme is kind of embedded and working well. So we've got over my lifetime, I've been involved in all kinds of different volunteering, which has suited me, which is a really good, powerful statement. I love being able to easily move between organizations, supporting the causes I care about. When I hear people talk about how volunteers contribute to communities, I know my efforts are appreciated. It's really worth noting that you can contextualize these things within your place. So any reference to community there may be a reference to the museum or the heritage space in which they volunteer. So that broad sense of transferring the context is absolutely welcome. And then on the next slide, please, we have the theme of power. Um, power is always one of the most engaged with themes. So Ruth, who I mentioned before, who I'm sure some of you will have come across from AVM, um, led a whole discussion on it in June to respond to that challenge, um, the challenging but thought provoking nature of this theme. Um, so we've got a future where volunteers and the communities they serve lead on change that matters to them. And then on the next slide, so if power is shared more, what might this feel like for volunteers? So we have, I have the power to shape my community, place or space, again, that transferable context and influence what's happening around me. Power is shared with me by people with influence and I'm supported to take control. Things are done to, sorry, things are done with, not to me. I'm listened to, respected, and my views are properly taken into account. So that sense of nothing um, about me without me um, certainly applies here. And the next slide, whipping through these so we can get to the discussion, um, we've got equity and inclusion. So this is, of course, an important and timely theme across society, not just in volunteering, but it would be easy to leave it out and assume that it's on anyone that, assume it's on everyone's radar now anyway, so we wanted to make sure that it was included front and centre. It's vital that volunteering becomes more accessible and inclusive so more people can feel like they belong in volunteering, whatever version of that um, is right for them. So a future where it's easy for people to give their time and energy to the causes they care about, they feel welcomed and the benefits are equally distributed. And then on the next slide, we'll see what that might what we might hear from volunteers if and when progress here emerges. So wherever I volunteer, I'm confident I'll be welcome and won't face discrimination. I'm supported to have full access to volunteering opportunities. And I'm confident that if I raise concerns about discrimination or inequity, that I will be taken seriously. And the next theme on collaboration, thank you. Um, so vision for volunteering in its entirety is built on collaboration. It's what created it and powers it forward and will continue to slowly but surely power it forward into the future. So a future where collaboration is natural and spontaneous, um, where people do great stuff together because they want to, which is a really brilliant statement, I always think. Um, we can also, on the next slide, if volunteers find themselves in a really collaborative space or place, they might reflect that they are supported to bring skills, knowledge and experience to working with new people and groups, um, encouraged to work with people and organisations that share our goals. And we might hear, I move freely between projects and organisations and contribute flexibly in a way that works for me. Um, this one really feels vital to me easier said than done but certainly something to strive for and certainly feels like a dream scenario for volunteers and then the final theme the fifth theme is on experimentation so my favorite theme if I had to choose um, it's also probably up there with power in terms of the theme that gets the most engagement so far I think people are hungry to experiment um, we had to over the pandemic and it became something positive throughout that just that sense of doing things differently because we have to. A future where communities aren't afraid to try new things, to develop their own innovative solutions and to engaging and supporting volunteers. I gently um, argue here that innovation is absolutely brilliant and should be embraced, but it isn't always necessary. It's very possible to be experimental um, with things that already exist. And if we embrace a more experimental culture around volunteering, 
we might hear things like, if I give feedback or share ideas, I know I will be listened to. Um, we're focused on learning and improving, not doing things the way we always have, which I think is really, really important. Um, I'm confident and able to try new things. We are not afraid of things going wrong. So again, that sense of psychological safety um, being really, really key to this particular theme, the ability to feel comfortable to try things out and acknowledge that they're not going to work every time or perhaps not in the way that we thought. Um,